Welcome to Scorched Earth. This is going to be a general reading for the month of May for the sign of uh, Gemini, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. If you don't know what your Moon or Ascendant signs are, have a look in the description box below. There's a link down there that will help you. Uh, and then you should come back and watch the videos for your Moon and Ascendant signs because you may find that you resonate with one of those more than you do with your Sun sign or it might just give you a better picture of what's happening with you overall. Either way, it's worth a look. As well as just being fascinating, I think, anyway. Anyway, <clears throat> I, uh, my books are open for personal readings again, uh, finally. The link is also down in the description box um, and I've left my email there as well. But if you can avoid using that for um, trying to book readings, use the scheduling link instead um, and just keep the email for, you know, reaching out for X, Y and Z. Thank you to uh, all my subscribers, uh, old and new. If you are new, I hope you find something here for you. And um, yeah, thank you for the likes and the subscribes and the shares and the comments and the donations. It's all gratefully, gratefully received. Um, mm. So this is third time lucky with this video because um, I've just tried to do it twice on the trot and uh, somebody's come and knocked at the door twice. Like I've had no one knock on my door for about six weeks and then two people in the space of like 15 minutes did it. <clears throat> anyway, so get three cards for Gemini. Ooh. First card you've got is the Two of Wands. It's in your recent past. Two more cards for Gemini, please. Got quite a few cards flipping over there, but uh, none jumping out, so... <clears throat> Hierophant in your current energy with the Ten of Cups that's flipped off to the side. I'm not going to take it because it dropped out and it was it was on the side, but uh, just acknowledge it anyway. And then Four of Pentacles. It's come out sideways though. So let's pin that as the way it came out. I'm going to put it upright. But they usually flop out sideways for a reading, so reason, so we'll see. Anyway, on the bottom of the deck we've got the Knight of Pentacles, which is good. I like to see that. I'm going to get some clarifiers and then we'll take it from there. Ooh. I did lots and lots of press-ups the other day because I started running online uh, kickboxing classes and um, any kind of oh, pushing that way is absolute agony at the moment. Mm. So why is it two of ones here for Gemini? It's strength, card of Leo in the Major Arcana. Like somebody's just fallen down outside the room. Why is the two of ones here? Page of Swords. <clears throat> interesting. I'm saying interesting because that card came out both times in both previous readings. Actually, so did the Knight of Pentacles. So there's obviously a message here, and I'm getting very hot as well, which I wasn't before. So obviously, those interruptions were meant to happen. What about the Hierophant? Why is the Hierophant here? Permit that came out. And the Four of Cups in reverse. <clears throat> Interesting. And tell me about this Four of Pentacles. Fair speed and out. This came out before as well, Knight of Cups. And the Ace of Pentacles, which also came out before. At the bottom of the deck, we've got the King of Wands. So that's strictly Leo. And we've got the world underneath it. But it could be a fire sign of any description. 
and not necessarily male with the world coming out underneath feels like there's an ending to do with potentially a fire sign if it's not a fire sign and it could be in the chart somewhere prominently you know say like moon or rising sign then there's a certain entrepreneurial spirit that uh, you will find in a person like that or in that energy anyway so it's another thing to pin we'll see if we can draw it in at some point anyway <clears throat> in your recent past we've got the two of wands now that is ooh, for me a card of the crossroads oh god i'm so stiff <laughs> sorry <laughs> stretch <clears throat> you know we've got this woman and she's she's you know on the roof of something that was castellated yeah, it was a castle or a church or something and there are two wands and interestingly they're both bolted to the wall now usually one of them is bolted to the wall and the person is holding the other one but not in this case she's just got a hand resting on it <clears throat> and she's got a crystal ball in her hand and she's kind of looking out toward i assume the horizon but through the lens of the crystal ball look and i really like that because usually it's depicted as the globe and that you know that that's good symbolism i like that as well but there's something slightly sideways something sort of slightly esoteric about what's going on here because <laughs> When you hit a crossroads, and it's an internal crossroads, right? It's stuff that's going on in here and in here, rather than necessarily outside of you at all. What we tend to do is try and see things through to their logical conclusions in our brains, right? So if I do this, then X, Y, and Z will be the consequences, and that will put me here. This way, I would put over there, you know, and possibly you might have more than two directions, right? But you do that with all of those. <coughs> and in the standard depiction, the chap is holding the globe and he's kind of looking out towards the horizon and it's like, the world is my oyster, right? Everything I have here in the palm of my hand. There's something slightly psychic about this. Like, this card seems to indicate that you can see things that are not necessarily obvious. Right. I'm not going to go as far as saying, you know, you're working as a medium or anything like that. Or a clairvoyant. But there's a certain sense of... An inner guidance that's helping you try and plan your route out ahead. And it's not obvious and it's very subtle. And it's really interesting because the, the, the second time that I tried to do the reading, the first card that came out was the hanged man. And I, you know, immediately saw, obviously, we're all in a state of isolation at the moment because of the, uh, the lockdown that half the world is in. But there was a sense of you willingly giving yourself to that space at the moment, right? Really submitting to the possibility of seeing things from different perspectives. But, but there being a withdrawal implied with it, right? that went beyond just current circumstances. It's almost like you're using the energy really, really sensibly to try and work out a few things about your future for you. And here it is. But I get a real strong sense of, of inner guidance, inner wisdom, maybe even divine guidance in some way, right? Like you'll know better than I. And perhaps if I end up drawing any more cards, if the High Priestess comes out, that would be a stingingly precise confirmation <clears throat> but that's the feeling that I'm getting like and it, it's almost like you have a number of options that have been available to you and you're drawn in a particular way without really having any evidence to suggest that that's the best way to go right that's what I feel the two cards that you've got to clarify are Strength and the Page of Swords. Now, Strength is a card of Leo, like I said, so if there's a Leo involved somewhere, and I'll bring you back to the fact that we had the King of Wands at the bottom of the clarifying deck, then, you know, all's the good. And this is something potentially that involves them. <clears throat> but if not, it's talking about that strength of character that's built up from, from dealing with adverse situations. And I know Geminis have been going through the ringer a little bit of late. <clears throat> 
But what's always implied for me from this is growth. And that's not something, it's not a key word that I hear, I hear readers using very often. Right? Because when you, when you work on your character, when you work on making it strong, when you get yourself through difficult situations and you come out the other side and, and you, you may not be unscathed, you know, you, you might be bearing the wounds of that or the scars or whatever. You are changed and you are different and generally you have grown as a human being. And I get that sense here again from you. It's almost like if you've been... If you'd been trying to do this, trying to make this decision, trying to work out how, how which way you were going to go six months ago, like you wouldn't have necessarily made as wise a choices as you are making right now. Because you're kind of listening to this internal stuff that's going on. And there's a lot of there's a lot of trust in your own abilities that you're fielding in the moment. And then we've got this page of swords. Now, I went notice as a card set on my table, this page of swords is looking back at strength. It's kind of completely oblivious to it. His feet are pointing one way, but his head's turning back and looking at strength. And strength is completely oblivious. And there's with the strongest sense of you shaking off other people's opinions, shaking off what they think of you, or rather, like, any notion that you need to pay attention to what they think of you at all, you know? It's like you're getting ready to head out on whatever new chapter you've got coming up, and, and I don't know why I said that, but it feels like maybe there is a new chapter coming up for you. But it's like you turn around to have a look just to check that your foundation is there, like everything is what I think it is, you know, about me, about my strength, about my ability to make this decision. You know, and it swords up in the air and it's kind of ready to go off that way. And it's a page. So for me, like, because it's the first card of the, the court hierarchy, it feels like a new start of some sort. Now, this could be a new way of you thinking, right? And if that is what you've got, then that will change your experience of the world altogether, right? Because it's the most profound change you can make and still have literally nothing any different around you to how it was, right? It's all about perception. <clears throat> really sharp perception. Tell me about this page of swords. Oh, now that is interesting. Tell me about the page of swords. So why it's interesting is we have the Hierophant card of Taurus and also your second card out on the table and the high priestess there she is right and there are lots of different ways of interpreting the hierophant but here while we're talking about the page of swords it feels very much like it's confirming what i was just talking about you not really caring about what other people think you know other people's judgments other people's you know framework that they live within it's not relevant to you anymore so the hierophant is all about structure right then hierarchy and society and things being done in a very ordered fashion right things being done the same way they've always been done right? i feel like you're throwing that script out altogether right and you're on the precipice of doing it i feel like you've done it internally right but you're on the verge of doing it in your 3D existence as well. I mean, this is all recent past, so this should all pretty much have been happening to you at the moment. <clears throat> but it's like there's no there's no resentment or animosity I'm sensing at all towards the way things have always been done, or you know whatever structural r restrictive kind of things that you've been adhering to for for however long. There's no sense of that at all. It's more like a I know who I am, I'm comfortable with who I am, and I'm going to be who I am, regardless of what anybody else thinks. And I bid everybody else well, you know, if it works for you, that's great, doesn't work for me, I'm going this way. It's quite, <clears throat> it's quite a reserved strength, right? This is not you leading with the mouth, this is le you leading with the heart and, and with the mind. 
That's gross. Oof, I like that Gemini. So, <clears throat> the second card that you've got is the Hierophant. Like I was just saying, this is about structure, it's about stability. It's also the card of Taurus. You know, if you've got a Taurus in your midst, then that's <clears throat> that's the thing. And before I go any further, like this can often indicate now institution of marriage because it talks about, you know, it talks about those established societal structures. So sometimes you can see the Hierophant indicating that, or sometimes it can be, you know, higher learning like university, even school actually, to be fair. You know, um, any kind of institution where you've got somebody right at the very top and then people beneath them, like, right? because it's called the Acolyte card. So in that case, it can also indicate business as well, right? Just think about those those structural limits where everything is done in a particular way, you know, whether it's fucking policies or, you know, <clears throat> religious doctrine. However, here it is in your current energy. Now, despite everything that I've just said, what I'm getting off this card is none of those things. What I'm getting from it is a sense of a spiritual development for you. Yeah. I really like this depiction of the Hierophant because I, for a start there are no acolytes and I think he's supposed to be a druid because it's, uh, it's the Llewellyn deck but to me he looks like a shaman right and he's sat back and he's just being at peace and at one with his natural surroundings. He's still managing to have a pillar because of the big standing stones that surround him but he's got a harp and he's got a horn and he's got a cup so you know we've got peace and harmony, we've got communication and we've got emotions right my cup is sat up stood up properly it's holding all the things that it that it should do it feels like spiritual growth it feels like spiritual evolution it feels like almost to a degree slight leadership now i'm not suggesting that any of you have started up your own cults or you know or, or, or become gurus or anything like that because we lead we can lead in all sorts of ways and and often the most successful way to lead is by example right you don't go out looking for people to lead but people see you they see how secure you are in your skin and i'm getting a real sense of that like you're really coming into your own and they want to emulate it right it's inspirational and so they follow you and you are now setting an example <clears throat> in your current existence as it is at the moment okay. And we've got the, Hier the, the Hermit and the Four of Cups to clarify. Now, the Hermit, like I said, is one of a number of cards that came out when I tried to do the reading before. It's the card of Virgo, but I don't think that's relevant. It's... We're back to this, you getting to know yourself, you knowing who you are, you being secure in your own skin. Like the Hermit goes within because he understands that that's where all the answers are. It's nothing to do with your external space. And, and you've got it, you've clicked, right? Whatever's going on around you doesn't fucking matter because it's how you perceive it in here and here that's important. And there's quite a shift that's gone on with you, Gemini. You know, I'll bring you back to the fact that the card that was directly underneath the King of Wands was the world. Like something's coming to an end, but then by definition, something new has started. Like you're wrapped up a cycle and you're moving on to the next chapter in your life. That's the phrase that I used and I had no idea why I'd said it. It just came out, right? And here it is. Like, if the isolation the one that's been imposed upon us by, you know, the governments and stuff, is what has caused you to finally have the time to stop talking and start feeling around inside of you to kind of make sense of what's going on in your head. It's worked terribly, terribly well for you. Really, really well. <clears throat> and then we've got this. Now, this way up, this talks about taking things for granted. It talks about a lack of gratitude. It talks about, you know, rejecting offers or missed opportunities or all those kind of things, right? And it's come out in the reverse for you. And it just, it, it, it's talking to me of liberation. It's talking to me about opening up. It's talking to me about freedom. Like you are practicing gratitude for everything that you have. You're understanding how lucky you are in an awful lot of ways, but also how you 
personally are able to co-create your own existence right there's nothing that can hold you back except yourself except your own mind and it's like you've got a handle on that you understand that now and so <clears throat> far from missing opportunities or rejecting offers or any of those things like right? you're grateful for everything that you've got there's no taking anything for granted here you know? but there's also a really solid understanding that you dictate how you move forwards right it's like taking responsibility, actually, for your life around you, for better or worse, but not having any kind of negative feeling about that. It's, it's a positive, I will create something really, really good. <clears throat> just pull another couple of cards back, so I'm kind of nosy. Queen of Cups, right? It's what I was just saying. This is somebody who is is open and receptive, right? The lead from the heart space, and that's what I felt over here. As you are now leading from the heart and not from the mouth. The two cards that fell out to the side here are the Devil and Temperance, right? You're letting go of fears. There's a lot of fears that you 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 just you've just sloughed off. There's a lot of toxicity that you've maybe sloughed off as well. And whether that's coming from other people or it's your own internal toxicity that you have identified and worked through and gone, right, I don't want to do that anymore because it's, it's, not, it's not cool. I don't really like it. And I'm kind of sick of being forced by my shadow to do things that, or not do things that I kind of would like to, but I'm afraid to. Right? And then temperance, which is, is all about healing and balance. It's a spiritual alchemy growth you know everything that we've been talking about <clears throat> and tremendous balance emotional balance particularly oh gemini you've really grown I, i'm so excited this is awesome the final card that you've got is the four of pentacles right now this talks about needing to let things go I've just noticed that directly underneath the Knight of Pentacles is the King of Wands again. If you don't have a fire sign knocking around you who's kind of important to this somewhere, then... then... Anyway. Needing to let things go. Or... Getting to a point where you can let things go. Because I feel like that's the last part of this transitional phase that you are in at the moment right there's you've done so much work and like i said over here i saw the page of swords like you're standing on the precipice of your new chapter right i think the only thing that's standing in the way now is just a couple of little things that you need to let go <laughs> the two cards that you've got to clarify are the knight of cups and the Eight of Pentacles. Now I'm going to go pull a couple of clarifiers for those because I'm not sure if those are two separate things, two separate areas that you need to look at to clarify, uh, to to release, or whether they are one and the same together. So let's have a look. It's been nosy out my window. What about the Knight of Cups? Gemini. Wheel of Fortune. Interesting. Ooh. Just got goosebumps. Hmm. What about the Knight of Cups? Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. All right, Gemini. <sighs> Tell me about the Ace of Pentacles. No, I'm not having that. What the fuck? <sighs> It's cards literally littering the floor everywhere. If you've never seen one of my videos before, I don't take them when they fall to the right. I like to take them when they jump to the left. So it's arbitrary, but it's my, uh, it's part of my ritual. So okay. nine of wands. Interesting. Oh, I've got goosebumps again. 
Oh, all over now. Right. Bottom of the deck now, we've got the Two of Pentacles. Right, you are actively searching for balance now and, and achieving it, I think. But it's like the work that you've started, right, over here, that you now continue on here, right? It, it's almost like a domino effect. It's, it's almost taking less effort to make bigger changes than it did to start this process in the first place, if that makes sense. We've got a whole array of cards here. <laughs> and I think possibly they're kind of separate, but they're, they're actually just kind of linked in together. And it's like this domino thing, right? So whatever you change in one aspect of your life is gonna have a knock-on effect somewhere else, particularly if that change is in a work because changing your frame of perspective perspective to for everything you know so nothing remains the same under that kind of work so the knight of cups <clears throat> i feel like he's here is a little bit of a warning actually now i've seen the rest of the cards that have come out you know he's come out underneath the four of pentacles right this need to release something that's coming in the month of may and then we have him now this is you know this is the the love messenger this is the one who comes over and says hey baby do you want my cup right and he's coming towards you i feel he or she doesn't make any difference right tara doesn't care about gender this is a person approaching you with a cup right and that's a nice thing. We like that, don't we? Thank you. It's nice to be told that, you know, we're desired and all that kind of thing. Except that. Shit. I just find cards everywhere. Almost back there. Except that it's clarified by the Wheel of Fortune and the Devil. Right? And that's a combination that makes me feel slightly uneasy. Because what it suggests to me is that this Knight of Cups is someone that you uh hmm, do you already know that i don't know if you already know them actually but it's somebody who's knocking around who is going to be approaching you at some point now do you know what i think it is possibly somebody that you know and it's possibly someone that you've had some sort of romantic dalliance with before in the past or you know or something a little bit you know less romantic and a bit more physical potentially <laughs> because you're being asked to release it, right? So this person's coming forwards, it's making their approach to you and they're going like, I've got this really shiny cup, look at my fancy white horse and my armor and all that sort of thing. But underpinning it, we've got these two here. Now, the Wheel of Fortune, yes, it does appear when your fortunes are going to start to improve, you know, and, and all that kind of thing. But that's kind of as an accidental byproduct of you aligning your energy, right? When you see the amount of work that you've done here, it's absolutely no surprise to me that this card appears, right? Because it's almost, it's almost like the natural corollary. It's it's a anticipated, <clears throat> but increasingly often. Uh, recently, I've been seeing the the Wheel of Fortune as a I don't really want to say test because that gives some sort of credibility to the fact that it could be something that you would fail and that's not what this is. It's kind of like I heard somebody say once, like when you're practicing manifestation, like often what you don't want is the thing that's sent to you just to check that it's the thing that you don't want before you get the thing that you do want, right? Feel like this is somebody that you have wanted right coming in being sent to you to check right because there's possibly some of you possibly need to release this person some of you may not even realize that maybe energetically you're kind of holding on to them a little bit but you are that combination together is shit Right, it's horrible. <clears throat> the only thing that could be worse than those two things together for me uh, would be the Knight of Cups and the Magician, right? Because that's a manipulative person. This is a person who will tell you that they love you. They'll tell you all the things that you want to hear, right? Before absolutely, you know, leaving you in the dirt to go and do something else, the more interesting instead. This is. 
this is kind of as toxic to be fair but there's less of a less of a direct manipulation feel to it the devil deals with kind of obsession and material things things of the flesh the earthy material 3d stuff right and these two coming in together right this is somebody that you've got a fairly toxic attraction to i think that you need to release and the kind of being sent to you to make sure that you are doing the work and releasing now if it isn't a person this could be a bit more abstract right and it could be talking about your need for validation right releasing your need for validation by from the 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 romantic actions of others right that's the way you see it like you you know in a, a new relationship energy and it makes you feel really really good you know before everything kind of the honeymoon period fades and then you're just kind of back to your normal self like like often that's sort of a result of kind of we just want people to tell us that we're lovely and we're awesome and we're beautiful and you know everything that they've always wanted that's a possibility as well And then we've got the Eight of Pentacles. Now, for me, this is the card of work, right? And, and specifically, it's working away at something to achieve mastery. Right? Because he's diligent and he's there and he's just like tapping away on that pentacle, you know, crafting it. He's already made some. So this could indicate, you know, work and career and that, all that sort of thing. That's possible. But then what is it that you would need to release? Right? It feels more like... Releasing whatever the Nine of Cups indicates to you, whether that's a person or, you know, a, a, a need for validation externally, you know, from another person finding us attractive or whatever. And mm, putting that work internal, right? making it internal instead. Working on things like boundaries, because we've got the Nine of Wands here and that talks about boundaries very strongly. If you've ever been a people pleaser, and I'm sorry, like Gemini's, you sometimes are, for all you're kind of a bit verbally fierce, actually you do, you, know, you do want to be loved. It's just sometimes you can't quite keep your mouth closed for long enough. <laughs> I know some really wonderful Gemini's, I really, really do. And this is part of what feeds into my assessment that you literally drop everything for people to your own detriment quite often you're not as good at looking after yourself as you are as looking after other people and that kind of that's part of this growth right that that kind of needs to be stepped down a little bit you need to learn to look after yourself you need to consistently keep that work going within because it's not a process that just you know is done at some point it, it, it's a never-ending cycle of work but you know what it feels like now you started a really strong process of it and i feel like you're starting to feel the results of it so you feel different to how you have done in a long time <clears throat> but get those boundaries up right because you come first and then what you've got left over that's what you can give to other people and we've got the world again, right? You've come to the end of a cycle. Look how strongly those two, like, both really symmetrical cards, <clears throat> which I find really interesting. Like, you're paying a lot of attention to your inside space, right? And I feel like you kind of like what you see. You're getting to the point where you like what you see inside because you've done the work, but you have pulled... You're pulling this ending together, right? It's so very nearly here. You release this stuff over here, whatever that is. And we've got a new start, we've got Page of Pentacles here, right? The Fool was at the bottom of the deck in the second, the second aborted reading that I did, right? It's a new start. There is a notion of a new start for you, a new chapter, and you are right on the brink of it. 
if you continue the work patiently with yourself but this whoever this character is coming in in may just be warned right they they might look good on the outside but you know what he's probably sitting on is a whole heap of red flags there or she you know they you know whoever it is there's 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 red flags hiding around there somewhere and don't be taken in by it release it let it go show the universe that you're ready for your new start i think so i'm going to leave it there gemini um i don't think i don't think i'll do an extended because it seems pretty straightforward um unless of course you tell me otherwise in which case i will do that and uh and then you know let you know about it so let me know in the comments um yeah and i shall go now best of luck have um a lovely uh, may and i'll see you soon